Welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council meeting. It's January 21st, 2021. Uh, pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order, we will be, uh, we have several council members who are conducting um, this meeting through Zoom. I think uh, Councilman LaLance, Councilman Wade, and Vice Mayor Skelos Harris are all uh, on through Zoom. Can y'all say you're here just so we make sure you're online? Madeline? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Rick? I heard him. Kurt? I'm here. Okay. All right. Um, we will uh, start with a prayer and a pledge. And um, Ms. Scales Harris, if you'll do the prayer and I will do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I was going to ask you there. Thank you so much. May we bow our heads, please. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we adore you, Lord. So many people, Lord, have lost their lives since the last time we got but Lord, we want to say thank you that you have allowed our golden home to roll on a few more hours. Lord, we thank you that we have the use of our limbs. We have food, we have shelter, we have clothing, we have our families, Lord. We have memories, and we are in our right minds. That is undeserving, Lord, but we want to thank you for that. Please read. Please, Lord, uh, restore peace, love, and harmony to what looks like, Lord, today. It looks like a dying world, but we know that you are in control, and we trust you, Lord. Bless our frontline workers, our teachers, our students, children, our seniors, and veterans. Please put your loving arms around our homeless and those in facilities, Lord. Please allow more shots to reach more people, Lord. Thank you for our staff and our employees, who without them, Lord, we would not be the city that we are. I ask your blessing on each and every council member and their family and our mayor. And Lord, as we prepare to start our meeting tonight, we ask that you move in the midst and that we make decisions that will be beneficial to our city. This is my prayer, Lord, that I ask in your daughter's son's name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, Ms. Scales Harris. Um, we have a STARS Award that we're going to present tonight. Ms. Russell. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. This month, we are recognizing Adam Todd and Cody Bell with the Water Resources Department as STARS Winners of the Month. Donald Hughes, who is also a member of the Water Resources Team, nominated these gentlemen because of an email the department received from a citizen who describes her situation as frightening when her car stalled in the middle of the road. And the email reads, I just want to take time to recognize two of your employees for going out of their way to assist me yesterday morning after I ran out of gas in the middle of the road. Adam and Cody pushed my car out of the way and then helped me get gas. Adam even went back to the store and purchased more gas when my car still wouldn't start. I ended up having to call roadside assistance to give me a jump start after they determined the battery was dead. As I was waiting for roadside assistance, Adam pulls back up with jumper cables to give me a jump. He truly is a good hearted person and most definitely an asset to your company. I was blown away by his act of kindness. Both of them went above and beyond to help me. I just wanted to let you know about the type of guys you have working for you. I can't thank them enough. They wouldn't take money or anything else that I tried to offer, but I still feel like they should be acknowledged. Thank you. Adam Cody, thank you for exceeding customer expectations and re representing the city in a positive light.
Kelly? I want to make um, one quick comment. I got an email, I think it was either this morning or yesterday morning, but um, the title of the email was, I'm gone, and it was from Trey Axum uh, from the Building and Codes Department. And so Trey is retiring uh, on, on January the 29th, and Trey has been with the city for over 30 years in a number of various capacities. Uh, whenever we went through a survey, an ADA survey throughout the entire city. Trey handled every bit of that. Trey has been on the commercial side of inspections. He's been on the residential side of inspections. So Trey has been one of our senior inspectors for many, many years. And um, I just want to make sure and publicly, yeah, I don't think you could drag Trey to a meeting to be able to stand out front and get an award. But uh, I do want to make sure and publicly acknowledge after 30 years the majority of things that have been uh, built inside this city one way or another, I think Trey has been involved in inspecting those. And so um, I want to say thank you to Trey and his family for what uh, they've done inside our city for the last 30 years. So thank you, Trey. All right, and I think we are taking uh, on your consent agenda, we're taking item six. We're removing that, correct, Craig? All right, we'll pull that. Okay, all right. Uh, on your consent agenda, we have items one through five. Move for approval. Second. Uh, motion a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move into minutes. You have uh, minutes from the September 11th to the October 24th meetings. Move, move for approval. approval. Motion uh, from Mr. Shacklett. Who's the second? Second. Mr. LaLance has the second. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. <clears throat> Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move into new business and you have resolution 21R04 policies and procedures of art displayed on city property. Ms. Jackson. Good evening. Public art is a, an important indicator in a vibrant community's cultural tourism and economic development, and in order to incorporate art and design projects of the highest quality throughout our public spaces, um, updates to city policies and procedures are proposed. This process will incorporate best practices, encourage the display of visual art, and provide a mechanism for the inclusion of artwork displayed on city properties. Before you are, um, is the resolution to adopt the policies and procedures for art displayed on city property, along with sample loan agreements and a sample donation agreement as well. Welcome any questions. Any questions? I really appreciate the effort that went into getting this together. A lot of people, a lot of staff, and particularly the leadership of Ms. Jackson to get this to the point, this is a, a, a new uh, venture to kind of set the framework and put up some guide rails for how we approach public art. I think there's a lot of opportunities that will be coming forward in the, in the coming months and years, and now we have something to be able to use as a guideline for that, and so I want to commend you for that, and I move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. All right, we'll move into Resolution 20R05, Charter Amendment, creating the Community Investment Trust Fund. This is the legal department. Mr. Tucker. Good evening, Mayor and members of council. Um, have before you a draft resolution 21R05 which is 
request the general assembly to amend the city's charter and provide for a method of managing the proceeds from the sale of the electric department and other city property as you know and others know of the council's had multiple discussions about means for investing and utilizing the proceeds from the sale of the city's electric department um and council has requested staff to explore the creation of a special fund that permits the proceeds to be prudently invested in a manner that produces a reasonable rate of return uh to achieve this objective it's uh the legal department's recommendation that the proceeds from the sale be invested in a trust or some portion of the proceeds of the sale uh be invested in a trust that benefits the community um i don't want to i'm sure there are lots of questions and 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 comments and probably discussion i don't want to go through the highlights necessarily at this point in time but i'm happy to answer any questions uh that you might have um if you were able to check your email and in the last two and a half hours or so i sent out some uh um items that um as possible points of discussion based on conversations that i'd had with members of council we don't have to limit our conversation to those but um i just thought those might be starting points and i think there were points that people wanted to cover during this discussion i have a quick comment um after reading through everything I, I would like it to say if the council would agree that either the mayor or council member serve as a council directive I, I, or council appointed person I, I think just saying that the mayor is going to do it you may have a council member that really has a passion that wants to be able to be part of that and so um just limiting it to the mayor serving as that I, that's just my opinion sure that's I mean in other words like we feedback yeah that, and I, I think if we treated that like we would any other or any of our boards boarding commissions um I think the only there's not a board or commission that the mayor is tasked to serve on is there mm -hmm. so I mean if the if the mayor not necessarily me or another mayor wanted to serve on that board then that's their prerogative but my, my guess is that most of the time the mayor would rather council members who I think that sometimes having the mayor serve as a chair of a board is tough just because it doesn't facilitate dialogue when the mayor uh, handles that board certainly yeah I'll comment and um, I called I was one of the people that Adam had to uh, listen to today but I uh, appreciate you taking time to do that I had a bunch of questions that, um, you know, until until something has some form, you really don't even know what to ask. And so I felt like what the draft of the resolution gave me some perspective on what we really should be talking about and questions we should be asking and answers that maybe I didn't have. So, you know, one of the things <clears throat> I, I have, uh, nobody throw anything at me, I'm not going to propose we talk about them, but I've got 25 questions that I had that came up as a result of that review. And I don't know that those things are things we want to talk about in a, a normal council meeting. Um, and so I had the thought of, and I know we're up on a deadline from the legislative session. I, you know, I didn't know that before I read it, but. Um, it would be only if we want to get in this year's session. I mean, it wouldn't, yeah. if we did next year, it's not that. It, it felt long. a lot to me like this was a great workshop item <clears throat> that we could hit three or four items a workshop and spend some serious time talking through and um, you know maybe those things don't last long at all maybe they're very simple but uh, I just didn't feel comfortable pressing through it uh, I know there's an opportunity cost of waiting a year um, and that's not lost on me but I'd much rather us say we spent a lot of time trying to craft this resolution rather than just we just did it so Adam the the general session they've got the special session that's going on now for education but they're not going right. to meet again until probably either midsummer or late summer is what no, they'll go <coughs> they'll end their education session my understanding is they'll end their education session towards the end of this month they'll take a two-week break and then they'll start okay. again in february so it's the february time frame and the period of time to propose bills is what we're attempting to get to okay um, the 
14th might our next workshop would be February the 14th I think that second Wednesday in February that might be cutting it pretty close since we're having a, I think we're having a zoom meeting next Wednesday for yeah. to talk about some of the MED things is did this schedule uh, one just if we could cover some things in a zoom meeting and get to a point where we can yeah have a resolution we can do we now, feel like, do we feel like we, we we could discuss this this item at the zoom meeting on we, Wednesday we could and if we get close you know we could be we could pass a resolution get the bill can be amended until it gets passed sure. so it's really getting the first draft done so they can drop the bill before they lose that time frame where they can let's have a goal that we all the council members we formulate our questions between now and Wednesday and if we get to where we feel comfortable on Wednesday then we can work up a resolution that we feel comfortable in presenting at the General Assembly but if not then we can you know push it um, another, you know another to the next legislative session but if we had a goal that we'll try to do it on Wednesday then that'll at least give us the opportunity to right you know to, to maybe I guess that four percent or five percent of that number you're, you're right that's a big number for a year uh, if, if but not worth messing that up for 50 years to come yeah. is that yeah. is that okay with everyone bill yeah I just want to make sure Adam uh, in the document that's created there's some there's some mistakes as far as I, the, the the numbers uh, are not correct the 42 million and the you know you need to correct I, I understand I understand yeah there was a last minute change I had flipped the three and the two and changed the okay. digits, <laughs> okay. but not the words so, I know uh, in my was in my career there's nothing better than pointing out an attorney when they've messed out on that. <laughs> <laughs> Feels that's, good, doesn't it? That's, that's <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. Deal. I didn't want to make a big deal of it, but if no, this yeah, document goes forward, it needs to be okay. correct. I, 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 that was pointed out to me this afternoon. So, okay, thank you. Uh, without council objection, objection, we'll defer on this uh, resolution and we'll take this up on Wednesday at our Zoom meeting with the intent that if we can get to some point of uh, being able to finalize then we'll we'll send that to the legislature if we can't then we'll we'll just keep working on it until we get that done if um, hey, mayor yes uh, one thing that I uh, want ever you know might ask everybody to think about is because my initial response was definitely I, I didn't feel like I was that we were in a spot to be able to vote on this tonight and so I had also kind of immediately sent something to Craig saying, hey, could we set up something else and get more time? Um, one of the things that might help us is when we're sending in questions, if we can sort of uh, categorize these questions, i.e., you know, so we can go through and kind of check boxes, right? I mean, you know, okay, these questions are kind of dialed in towards does everybody agree on how we want to invest the money? Okay, we can check that box. Does everybody agree on how much of a distribution we're going to take? We can check that box. So maybe just be thinking about those kinds of things where we can kind of go through and, and isolate the areas that we really have to work on, you know, like where we got to come to some agreement. And, and I, I would add, too, if um, it would be helpful for me, and I think it would be helpful for council for for next Wednesday's meeting, if um, you know, just based on the conversations that I've already had with council members, there are there are sections where you know I could prepare alternative language for people to consider. And so, if you you know, if, when you send me questions, if there's something like I would, I'm wondering if language, if we could approach this part of, you know, how the trust operates in this way, mm -hmm. that I could possibly have something that we could look at what may be good it, just because you're not going to be able to tell if you know all of us individually are sending you questions you're not going to be able to tell if the entire group would want to do that or not so let's use this next Wednesday as the ability to be able to come to a consensus on this is what we'd like to see and then give you the next maybe week or two weeks to work on language that we all can can look at sure and I, I hate for you to spin your wheels on you know if I'm saying hey I'd like to see this and you write language on what that would look like and then everybody else say no I'm we, we don't want to do that so that this will probably give us the ability to be able to get that done and you don't have to to waste time on 
a bunch of rabbit holes. Okay. All right. All right. We'll move on to um, land use matters. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for working so hard on that. Mr. Blomley, I want to go on record as I'm wearing my orange mask <laughs> that I will never say a word to you again about Auburn looking for a football coach. Uh, <laughs> after, Because to, to my knowledge, y'all have not been looking for an athletic director and a football coach at the same time. So. Hey, and got an athletic director. Yeah. Yeah. And Danny White. Not the guy's got our defensive coordinator last week so true. yeah he, he's in the mix to be y'all's head coach well <laughs> just thought i'd publicly need to say that matthew to before well, you did <laughs> so uh, all right we'll move into amending the zoning ordinance for boarding and zoning appeals members compensation thank you mr mayor and uh, good evening mr mayor and members of, uh, of council um a couple of months ago we reviewed the uh, compensation and the ways we adjust compensation for both the planning commission members and the uh, Water Resources Board members. Uh, we thought it was appropriate to take a look at the Board of Zoning Appeals members' compensation as well. And in doing so, we found out that our zoning ordinance actually has a specified amount that they get compensated. And so, which means that every time we wish to address their compensation, to adjust it, uh, we would have to have an amendment to the zoning ordinance, which requires a public hearing. So uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make the uh, with the way that we adjust the compensation for the Board of Zoning Appeals members in line with how we adjust compensation for the Planning Commission and the Water Resources Board as well. So there's an ordinance amendment, a zoning ordinance amendment, that instead of having a specified amount for BZA member compensation, it states that their compensation shall be, um, shall be uh, adjusted by resolution of the City Council. Um, and then also to follow up on that ordinance amendment, there's a resolution um, so there'll be two votes tonight on this matter, an ordinance amendment to our zoning ordinance to allow it to be set by resolution and then a follow-up resolution um, that would uh, propose to set the BZA member compensation at $150 per month. Right now it's at $100 per month and um, it's my understanding that their compensation has not been adjusted in approximately 20 years. So um, uh, we, have, we have some uh, knowledgeable and uh, dedicated individuals that serve on the Board of Zoning Appeals. And um, so this will, uh, reviewing their compensation, will, I believe will help to, for us to be able to retain these dedicated uh, individuals that are on our board now and the ones who will serve on the board in the future. Uh, Planning Commission uh, conducted a public hearing on the matter and voted uh, to recommend its approval. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, we'll now need to hear, uh, consider a public hearing for amending um, this ordinance. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, if you'll come to the podium, uh, if you're representing an individual, or if you're representing just yourself, you'll have three minutes as a group, you have five minutes. If you'll keep all questions directed to the council, we'll get those answered at the end of the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and we'll now consider ordinance 2046. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Well, now need you consider resolution 20R29, and this is for setting the monthly compensation. <laughs> Move for approval. So moved. Motion and Mr. Wade has a second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into Planning Commission recommendations to schedule public hearings. What do you have for us, Mr. Blomley? Uh, Mayor McFarland, we have one public hearing to schedule mm -hmm. um, and we would recommend a date of March the 4th. Be happy to answer any questions. All right. Public hearing for March 4th. Mr. Sure. Martin has March 4th. Second. Mr. Wright. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Palmley. All right. We now have. Um, Several things on motion. We have the sewer allocation variance for 2435 South Church Street, and this is Popeyes. 
Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, Sam Huddleston, Development Services. We have a uh, sewer allocation variance request for Popeyes located on uh, 2435 South Church. Our Water and Sewer Department has reviewed this and they do have the additional sewer capacity. Our Director of uh, Water Resources Department has approved it for relative to sewer capacity. We think there are overall financial benefits to the city and to its residents uh, to grant this variance and we recommend you approve it and I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? No questions, move for approval. Second. All right, Mr. Mr. Wade. Mr. Wade has a second. Uh, Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Yes. Mr. Martin. No. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into sewer allocation variance 2901 South Church Street development. Thank you, Mayor. Again, uh, multi-tenant building proposed at 2901. It's been reviewed by our water and sewer department and uh, sewer capacity is available. Our director of the water resources department concurs with the um, uh, with this pro project uh, for sewer allocation. We believe the financial benefits to the community and to the city of Murfreesboro uh, warrant this variance and we'd recommend approval. I'd be glad to answer any questions. No questions, move for approval. Do we have a second? Second. All right, Mr. Wade. Mr. Vice, Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. No. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. All right. All right. We have a sewer allocation variance for the MTSU campus. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Our third sewer allocation variance request tonight involves the improvements at MTSU, including a new concrete and construction management building, and also uh, accommodations for expansion of the uh, MTSU chiller plant. It's been reviewed by our uh, water and sewer department, and uh, the sewer capacity is available. Uh, it's been approved by the Director of Water Resources, and we believe that the benefits accruing to MTSU and the City of Murfreesboro uh, warrant this uh, variance request and recommend approval. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Draw in, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skels Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Did he say aye? He said, he's aye. Right. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into an agreement with CMH Architects, and this is from the Parks and Recreation Department. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Huddleston. Mayor, members of council, as you recall, in April 2019, we entered uh, into a cooperative use agreement with the Tennessee State Soccer Association to bring their headquarters to Murfreesboro. As part of that agreement, uh, we committed to several facility enhancements, including the lighting of the six Jordan Farm soccer fields, uh, the transition of eight fields from natural grass to synthetic turf, uh, construction of an indoor practice facility, and the addition of an office space for TSSA and Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation staff to share, uh, in which TSSA will pay an annual lease fee of $50,000 per year. Uh, before you tonight is an agreement with CA CMH Architects for $79,200 uh, for the design of the office space that will also include additional square footage for retail and multi-use areas. Uh, the total cost for construction is expected to be $1.2 million uh, and is antici anticipated to be about 6,000 square feet. Uh, funds for this uh, project are allocated. It's in the operating budget, not in the CIP budget, but in the 2021 operating budget. So. I'd be glad to answer any questions uh, or give you any update you'd like on the Seagull Soccer Complex. Any discussion or questions? There is none. I'll make a motion to 
approve. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Way. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Right, thank you, Mr. Williams. I'm beginning to think that Mr. Lance is somewhere in the middle of a lake on a boat <laughs> fishing. <laughs> now, All right, we'll move into purchase like replacement that? of transit buses. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, the Transportation Department is seeking to update and replace our existing transit bus fleet. Uh, your approval of the contract with Central State Bus Sales for the purchase of nine 28 foot low floor buses will ensure a timely replacement of our aging fleet. The existing buses were purchased in 2013 and will have an average of 300,000 miles by the time we receive the new buses. Um, as the buses increase with age, our road calls and repair downtime increase as well. We're taking advantage of a purchase option from the Nashville Wego bus procurement that decreases our administrative time required to perform federal procurements and increases our buying power by ensuring we are getting a fair market price. The city's public transit system has budgeted a total of 1,525,000 for this purchase of which 1,396,203 is in federal and state grants and the remaining 128,797 will be funded out of the general fund using the state of Tennessee governor's local support grant as approved at the August 12th 2020 council meeting. Uh, we anticipate the buses will be delivered in fiscal year 22. Therefore, the transportation department will carry the grant revenues and bus expenditure into the FY22 budget. And with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Any questions? No questions, I move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll now move into interchange lining contracts with TDOT for the I-24, Joby Jackson, and 840 and Veterans Parkway. Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. This is uh, for the interchange lighting contract between the city and TDOT for the I-24 at Joe B. Jackson and the I-840 at, Veter <coughs> at Veterans Parkway. Uh, TDOT, <coughs> excuse me, TDOT Interchange Lighting Program is a state-funded pro uh, program that requires a 50% match from all, for all phases of the project. <coughs> all phases of the contract will be managed by TDOT with an estimated time frame of about three years. The local government can use surface transportation block grant funds to offset the local match if it's available at 80% of the match required. The city requested and received interchange lighting contracts for I-24 at Joe B and I-840 at Veterans Parkway. TDOT uh, project estimate for I-24 at Joe B Jackson is about 1.7 million, funded 50% state, 40% federal, and 10% local, which makes the city's match a little over $170,000. The project estimate for the I-840 and the Veterans Parkway project is a little over 1.3 million. Again, will be funded 50% state, 40% federal, and 10% local, which makes the city's match approximately 131,000. Um, TDOT's estimates are opinions of part probable cost, and the city will be required to match actual cost upon completion of the project. Matching funds will be funded through State Street Aid. As an additional note, TDOT is currently working on ramp and signal improvements at each of these interchanges. The expected delivery of these improvements is about three years, so the lighting and improvement projects should run concurrently. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Thank you for working so hard on this. I know we all have gotten Yes, sir. Several emails about um, Joby Jackson and 24, that intersection on how dark it is out there. So thank you for working with the state on this. Thank you. I think we also got some, well, after this motion, we'll let you brief us on one more thing. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. 
Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. And um, also, Mr. Kerr, I know I got a letter from TDOT today on Bradyville Pike yes, on, on the funding, so that looks like that is approved today to yes, be sir. able to start. So uh, there, there, I, I will tell you there will be an, an amendment coming back because there were some numbers that weren't quite right within the contract. It doesn't affect us anyway in funding. It just gets our contract and a tip yeah. lined up. I, I, as soon as I got that letter today, I immediately forwarded that to Stephen Shirley, who has pushed that for probably 15 years, and he responded back, this is the best day ever. So. Well, I tell you what, if I could, I would really like to give praise to the legal department, David and Felicia. They've been doing an excellent job on the, uh, the right-of-way uh, coordination. We have over 150 properties that we're acquiring on that particular project following the federal mm -hmm. guidelines, so they're doing a great job. Just want everyone to know. Well, and I, for most residents who are out there, you won't uh, realize that Bradyville Pike from um, really Broad Street all the way to out is a state road. And you wouldn't think that driving through Murfreesboro, but that is a state road. So this will be the widening from Broad Street, uh, or excuse me, from Middle Tennessee Boulevard to Rutherford Boulevard. Uh, Broad Street to Broad Street to, yes, to, to Rutherford Boulevard. Yes, so thank you, Mr. Kerr. Thank you. All right, we have West Point Section 3, Water Main Upsizing Participation. Mr. Kerr. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity to uh, come before you tonight. Um, first item I have is a funding participation request to upsize a water main to provide adequate fire protection along a portion of Warrior Drive. There's an exhibit in front of you. We have an existing eight inch water main in the blue and the green area. There's a new uh, Warrior uh, Drive loop that uh, would benefit by putting in a 12 inch diameter water main versus an eight inch water main. Uh, that's a $109,000 uh, upgrade. Uh, so we think that that is beneficial for uh, the development and it meets our uh, participation requirements. Just as a note, two, two of the larger uh, developments along that corridor would generate about $664,000 worth of water connection fees. So we're, uh, it covers the cost of the upgrade. So uh, we would recommend uh, participating in an amount of $109,477 to upgrade that water line. And I'm available for questions. There are none. I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Core. All right, we'll move into TDOT Salem Highway. This is contract su supplements, Mr. Mr. Core. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the uh, uh, really just kind of some contract revisions due to some outdated contracts we had with TDOT. Uh, this Salem Highway project was one phase back in 2000, prior to 2017, and it was from Old Fort Parkway out all the way out to Case Lane. 2017, they split it into two phases. Um, they've also got some new criteria where they want uh, utilities relocated out of the TDOT right of way when, uh, whenever possible. So this is really just some cleanup. Um, this is for the section between Old Fort Parkway and I-24, phase two. And uh, so, uh, again, just other than, than satisfying their contract, you know, getting a new contract for the utility uh, relocations, uh, uh, this is just some cleanup work. So we would recommend approval. Any questions? There aren't any. I move for approval. I'll second. Motion second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, you have. I don't think we have any licensing, do we? No, sir. Uh, you've got a reappointment um, for Mr. Steve Waldron on the Airport Commission. Mr. Waldron has been the chairman for the last three years. I think he's been on the board for 
15 or 20 years and has really been in charge or shepherded uh, the, the largest expansion we've had out the airport in its history. So recommending his uh, reappointment. Uh, Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. Uh, I think Ms. Glenn has uh, some other business from uh, the director, or excuse me, Assistant Director of Community Development. Ms. Glenn. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Um, I passed out um, some information yeah. about we have an application for down payment assistance under our affordable housing program and it's for a gentleman who's going into one of the first houses in uh, Legacy Point next week. So we're asking for um, approval for him to be funded under our CDBG allocation program for okay. affordable housing. Any questions? Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Ms. Lear. Thank you. Uh, any other business? Yes. Yes. Just bad answer. <laughs> Chad. I'll be quick. No, this is actually a good, good other business. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm bringing to you a, uh, an agreement with D3 LLC for the sale of the property at Memorial and, Ruth, and, uh, and Airport Road. This is for uh, $1.555 million. And uh, we had uh, two previous uh, applicants. Uh, those deals did not follow through. Uh, this one's the charm, if you have any questions. Any questions? <clears throat> I uh, recommend approval and uh, it, it, they will relocate our airport sign. So yes. that's, that's, that's a yes. good thing. Uh, move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. I think Thank you. Mr. Martin. Yeah, I just had two quick things. And, um, Craig, thanks for sending the update this week. That's great to get those things. Two things that it prompted me um, to think about. We've not talked about impact fees, I guess, since before December. So just an update, kind of where we are there. And then um, also the, um, the old First Methodist site. If just a quick update there, just where we are. Okay. Uh, impact fees, uh, we are working with some of the uh, to gather some of the additional information the council asked for at the last workshop. I think uh, February is where we're slated to, to bring that back if we can gather all the information. Okay. Um, and as far as the first Methodist property, um, the, uh, the, there have been meetings, I think they were in December before the holidays, about uh, that they've reworked some of the project financing has had to change. Uh, they actually found uh, additional and new financing that's a very positive effect and has allowed the project to actually be uh, increased as far as the dollar investment out there. Um, I think there, this, from what I understand, if everything gets lined up and some of the financing is federal, so you, you never know about that timing, um, but I think they're, they're looking at uh, starting some demolition work, I think around the springtime and uh, to get moving on that, if I remember correctly. But we'll, um, I'll have Mr. Whitaker, who's been uh, deeply involved in the scheduling on that, provide council with an update. Thank you. Okay, any other business? Had one quick comment. Uh, talked about an hour ago with uh, Director Clark with Rutherford County Emergency Medical Services, or uh, Emergency Medi... I, I get confused on, he's the he EMA director. Right. Um, and he was calling, he said, hey, I know you never hear from me when things are going well, but I just want to let you know today there were over 40 uh, Murfreesboro police officers and firefighters who were working the vaccination site today. Our firefighters were actually uh, even giving the vaccinations to uh, residents as they were coming through. So he said things are going uh, really well. That Miss um, Dixon, who is our, who is the interim director of the Rutherford County Health Department, is handling things well, 
in that uh, they are hitting their timelines and they're also hitting the amount of people who are scheduled by appointment to be able to come and get vaccinated. So he was just mm-hmm. wanting to pass along how well the city team is, is doing with the county team. Real quick on scheduling. Uh, we talked briefly next Wednesday. Where we'll uh, uh, announce, put out an agenda for uh, a special council meeting to talk about uh, the um, proceeds of the electric department sale. Uh, so that's on the 27th. We don't plan on meeting then on Thursday, the uh, the 28th, and then our next regular meeting would be uh, February the 4th, and then a workshop to follow that on February the 10th. Okay. Any other business? All right. Seeing none, we'll stand adjourned.